Good morning and welcome to Sunday School. Today we're starting by thinking about feelings. So I'm going to try and use my face to show a feeling and see if Ruth can guess what feeling I'm thinking of. Feel free to shout them out as well. So, how do you think I'm feeling now? Happy. Yep. What about this one? Oh, you look very sad. Very sad. How about this one? <gasps> Surprised. And this one? Oh, I think you look a bit angry. Yeah. Really good bottom, <laughs> Ruth. Did you get them right at home? So today, in our story, we're going to meet Joseph, who had a lot of very interesting things happen in his life. Some things that made him very happy, something that made him very sad. See if you can spot them as we read our story. The Forgiving Prince. Jacob had twelve sons, but of all his sons, Joseph was his favourite. One day, Jacob gave Joseph a splendid new robe. It was beautiful and rich with all the colours of the rainbow, but it made Joseph's brothers jealous. They wanted rich rainbow robes too. Then to make matters worse, Joseph kept on having these special dreams. I dreamt I was the greatest, I was king, Joseph told his brothers, and you all bowed down to me. Now, I'm sure you know, even if Joseph didn't, that telling your brothers things like that isn't a very good idea. Joseph's brothers hated him even more. They wanted to kill Joseph and his dreams, and one day, that's exactly what they tried to do. They tore Joseph's rainbow robe off him and sold him to slave traders for 20 pieces of silver. The traders took Joseph to Egypt and made him into a slave. The brothers went home and lied to their father, telling him that Joseph was dead. That's the end of that dreamer, they thought, but they were wrong. God had a magnificent dream for Joseph's life, and even when it looked like everything had gone wrong, God would use it all to help make the dream come true. God would use everything that was happening to Joseph to do something good. Meanwhile, though, things were not looking good for Joseph in Egypt. He was far from home and from his dad. Then he got blamed for something he didn't do. And even though he had done nothing wrong, he was punished and thrown in jail. But God had not left Joseph. So Joseph knew that God was in control. Even when Joseph was in prison for something he didn't do, he knew that God had a plan. When you trust God and know that he is in control, you can begin to feel content. This is more than happy. It's a safe feeling as you trust in God, happy with who you are and where you are. So are you content with your friends? Are you content with your things? Are you content with your school? We can be thankful to God for all the good things that he's given us. Ruth, look at my coat. Look what's happened here. There's a massive hole in the pocket. I can't wear yeah. that. It's going to lose all my things. This is rubbish. Ugh. Ooh. It must be tricky to have a coat with a hole in the pocket like that, but we've just been thinking about contentment and trying to find things that we're happy about. So is there anything about your coat that maybe makes you happy? Anything good about it that you can well, think of? Well, it has got a really big hood. It does keep me nice and dry when it's oh, raining. It? And actually, it's really warm. It keeps me so warm in the winter. And actually, well, the other pocket's all right. I can fit loads of them. They're really big pockets. I can fit loads of useful things in this pocket. So actually, do you know what? It is a really good coat. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm content with my coat. There's more good than bad about it. Seems like there is. Sometimes our feelings take over. We forget to look at the facts. I got really grumpy about the hole in my coat pocket and forgot the fact that actually the coat still does exactly what it's designed to do. Keeps me warm and keeps me dry. Right, are you ready for a challenge? I've got a 2p, Ruth's got one as well. We're going to see if you can balance it on your thumb, like that. Flick it up and catch it. So we go. Oh, oh. yes! <laughs> <laughs> this is the first take, actually. We didn't know it was going to happen like that. Let's try again. So flick it up and catch it. <laughs> no. No, Ruth is gone. <laughs> Put it back, it's okay. So, how many times can you flip a coin and catch it in a row? Let's have a go this week. Can you do flip and catch? Flip and catch. This will help you remember to flip your feelings. When you're feeling discontent about something or really grumpy about it, think, hang on, I'll flip those around. What has God given me that's really good? If you're thinking really grumpy, I haven't got the latest toy, I really, really, really want a whatever it is you're thinking of. Flip your feelings. Go back and think, what do you have? What toys, books, games and things are there in your house that you could thank God for? If you're really hungry and your grown-up says you can have a healthy snack and you get really grumpy because actually you'd want an apple. You really, really wanted a cookie. Flip your feelings. Get that coin. Flip your feelings. Stop and think. 
that you can be really thankful that we live in the sort of country where there's not only a lot of food, but we have a choice about what we can eat and there's always enough for us every day. I think I might put my coin in my pocket this week, not the one with a hole in, the other pocket, and keep this with me because I'm going to know I'm going to need to flip my feelings this week to remember that God is in control and we can be thankful to him every day for the way he cares for us. See you next week. Bye-bye.